Hello, I am Tug and I want to show you today how easy it's to create a custom GitHub action. Sometimes on the GitHub marketplace, you don't find what you need and you don't find it either on another open source project and you may want to create your own action. This is exactly what I will show you now based on a very simple JavaScript example. This JavaScript example, it's extracted from a small blog post that I have created that you can find here. And let's dive now on how to create this specific action. The first thing to do is to create a GitHub repository. Let's use the CLI to do that. GH repo create, the name of your repository. You create the repository as a public one, so dash dash public. And you add, if needed, some ignore file, git ignore file. So in this case, it's a Node.js, it's a JavaScript application. And let's add a license to it. Then dash y to uh, accept all by default. When you do that, it's creating a repository in your github.com account. And you have locally the code also. You can now open this action or this rep project in your VS code. And in the same time, you can quickly check that the repositories has been created on your github.cart account. Check file actions. Perfect. So now I'm coming back into my VS code and I will finish the preparation, the configuration of the repository. So let's open a terminal and initialize a, a Node.js project with npm. So creating npm init to create the package.json. And now I just have to import some dependencies. npm install actions.core slash core. Sorry, at actions core. That will give me all the libraries and APIs that I need to manipulate workflows while they are being in my action. And also GitHub to get the API from GitHub to manipulate commands, pull requests, and so on. When you are done with that, you still have one other step to do. Because all the actions will be executed from your repository, you need all the dependencies to be part of your project. When an action is called, you don't have any installation, npm install done in the context of the workflow. All the distribution of your action should be self-contained. This is why, in this case, because I don't want to do any packaging, I will comment in the inner file, the dist on the node modules lines to be sure that all my dependencies are commit and pushed inside my repository. So now that we have this done, we can start to develop the actions by creating an action YAML file. The action YAML file contains all the metadata needed to the, for the workflow to understand how it works. So the minimum value will be the name and the running uh, information. So the name will be check file action, adding a description with more information, like for example, check readme on license file. My goal is not to build a very complex action, it's just to show you how quickly you can create an action. So runs uh, using Node.js, it could be a container if you, uh, if you want to do that with a container. When it's not JS, you have to define which JS uh, file you will be calling when creating the action. Everything is documented about this metadata in the documentation. Metadata syntax for GitHub action, you see the name and all the other attributes. You can go more into the detail. We can go more later to see how you can have input output parameter, for example. So you can look at the different attributes. But let's go back now to our code to add the index.js. So let's create the file. And at the beginning of the file, I will just include the core API and the GitHub API. Then I will create an anonymous function that will be called when the workflow needs this action. And in this, I will just do a try catch. In case of error, I will stop the action, will stop the workflow with an error message. In case of success, I will just include a message on the annotation on my workflows. Set failed from core with an error message. And let's add the include 
to drop a message in the console and associate it to the workflow. My action is called coding my action. Now we are done. The action is built. We have the source code, we have the metadata, we have the dependencies. So we just need to commit and push the code. So let's check that the node module is part of the commit. Yes. So let's do git add, git commit, git push. So when the push is done, we just need to test our action. The best way to test the action is to create a new repository. So let's see, everything has been pushed. As you can see at the top of the repository, we see publish these actions to the marketplace. So you can, if you want, share your actions with the community, make that available on the marketplace. Quite exciting and quite easy. Obviously, this action is too simple. It doesn't do anything, doesn't add any value. And I am sure that you will find actions that already check if some of this kind of file exists on your repository. Once again, the goal is to learn how to build the actions, not really to build an action that you will be using on your project. So let's create another repository now to test the action. So I will create a repo, private repositories, add a license file like that. We will see later that we can test if the file exists or not. Creating the repository, done. And now we have to create a workflow. The best way to create the workflow, click on the action tab and select simple workflow. By default, this workflow will be used every time we do a push on the main branch or a pull request related to main. And at the bottom, we will just use our action as a last step. Changing the name and pointing using the uses tag to our action. Tigral check file action. And as, I, as you can see, I am adding at main because when you are integrating an action inside your project or inside your workflow, you need to specify which tag, which version of the action you want to use. Usually for production, you will be using a specific tag or specific commit char. But since we are developing, we just want to use the main like that. When, when we, we develop new code, we can test the code as we are developing the application, the action. So now I just need to start uh, commit and save. Committing the new file will run the workflow. So let's go to the actions, see the workflow execution. And the workflow execution will call our action directly from our public repository. Running the actions, call my custom action. And as you can see, calling our action. And if I go to the summary, you will see that because we use notice, it's at the bottom of it. We have one annotation, one notice. So the next step now is to add more logic to the application. For example, we will write the code that check if the license file exists, if the readme file exists. If one of the files does not exist, we will fail. We will send an error to the workflow, stopping the workflow. So let's add and use a file system library from Node and create a very simple function that check if a file exists. If the file exists, we just log an info, returning true. If the file does not exist, we will fail the workflow, returning false. For this, I will use Copilot that will help me to uh, write the code. As you can see, very uh, smart assistant. Promises access then and, and catch. So if the file exists, I will return true and I will log an info message into the console, into the workflow console. If the file does not exist, I will fail this step, set failed, with a specific message saying that the file is mandatory and I will return false. I won't use a Boolean value for now, but it could be interesting later on. 
So let's now go to uh, the code and I call uh, these two methods, well, this method twice, sorry. One for the readme file, one for the license file. Once again, not production grade code, it's very basic. So art coded the name, not uh, case, insensitive, case sensitive, so not very smart action. So now we can save, we can push the code into the repository on the set we can check if the code is failing when the file does not exist. So let's do a git add, git push, git commit, git push. And we will refresh the call to uh, the action or the workflow. Let's go back to the testing, uh, the repository that we used to test and we run all the jobs. It will run the job in the same context, no new file, so it will use the same repository that doesn't have any readme, but has a license file. And we, sh we should see one failure, one success. As you see, build, it had failed. Readme file is mandatory, file license exists. If we go to the summary of the action, uh, we should see uh, the same message. But let's add a readme file for now and run the action again, or run the workflow again. To run the workflow, we just need to commit the file because every time we push, the action, uh, the workflow will be executed. Let's wait. And we should see a green light now on this workflow because we have read me a license file. So both files are present now. So our action has been su successfully called. So as you see, in what, five, 10 minutes, we were able to create a new actions that interact with the workflow, updating the action code to test and be able to log some information, stop the workflow with an error based on some very basic business logic. So if you need more information, you can look at my blog for more sample code and detailed explanation.